Greetings, ladies and ladies, and welcome back to the icy plains of Hero Quest. Having painted the Yetis in their classic and then advanced color scheme last time, we now want to tackle the main course of this expansion pack the Frost Horror. Before we begin, I quickly want to clarify that this big boy is part of a bigger commission bestowed upon me. Which means that, on one hand, I am free to really go ham here and stretch the boundaries of my abilities. But on the other hand, it means that this video might contain a few techniques that would stretch the meaning of speed painting a fair bit. So we might need to take this title with a pinch of salt this time. All that out of the way, let's get right to it. This miniature has a lot of unique blue tones to it. The first one being a dark bluish metal color, which we're gonna need for the trims of his armor. Being as big as he is, these trims are of a nice scale to work with, and we can take care of them easily enough. We also use this color for the head of his massive axe, before switching to a regular dark blue to paint the armor plates himself. So far, it's just been simple paint by numbers, but when I started taking care of the leathery bits with a mustard yellow, it seemed that I've been a little too eager with the metallic blue on the backplate. After a quick fix up here, we take a pale khaki for his loincloth, before coming back to his belts with a very dark brown. For his secondary belt, we take a warm true metallic gold, which we also need to use for all of the studs, spikes and rivets dotted around his armor. This part was quite fun, so much so that when I got to the true metallic silver parts like the blades of his axe, I realized that I've made yet another mistake on some of the rivets that needed to be silver. Now that we're done with all of his equipment, it's time we take up the beast itself, mixing up a custom grey tinted blue and schlop it all over it. The only real precaution we need to take here is that we don't hit any of his armor parts, and also try to avoid the furry frame of his outfit as best we can. But other than that, just have your fling here. When all of his own fur is covered, we take a dark white, or a very light grey if you will, and clean up the fur that we previously tried our best to avoid. We then take a very light blue to catch all of the ice formations and icicles making up his beard. And after that, take care of some of his facial details, like for example his teeth and the long tongue sticking out between them. All of the base colors are now in place, and I think we've done an extraordinary job keeping in with the original color scheme presented by his art card. Lastly, we give all of his fur a quick dry brush with our off-white again, and then paint the whole beast with a thin coat of blue glaze, to achieve a really chilling finish. The speed painting portion of this model is now complete, and I gotta say that I really like the outcome so far. This miniature is by all accounts game and table ready, but I still think that there is a lot more potential left in him. Which is why I want to use the next few minutes to showcase a few more extra steps on how to make this miniature look even cooler. Picking the brightest white in our arsenal, we start with the relatively tedious, but in my opinion no less enjoyable process of catching all of the individual strands of hair on his white fur and the surprisingly well conditioned teeth on this beast. Then we turn our attention to the icy structures putting the white away for now and taking up a very light blue for all the edges and ridges facing the light. After that, we switch back to our pure white and repeat the process all over again, this time really focusing on the very tips and most prominent ridges of the ice. When we are happy with the result, we take a mix of our dark blue and some medium grey to catch all of the strands of hair of his luxurious mane and give the rest of his body a quick dry brush over all the areas that get the most light. After that, 
we basically repeat this process two more times. First with an off-white, and then with our pure white, getting closer to the tips of his mane's hair, and the center of light on his limbs each time. This is especially important when taking care of his facial features, as we're gaining a lot of contrast, and therefore more definition on this already very nicely modeled visage. As the final touch here, I picked up the ruins of his axe with a subtle glow effect, and after that's all in place, we can call this mini officially done. Alright, this miniature right here surely is one of the coolest miniatures I've painted this year. Pun not intended for a change. As always, I'll have a full guide with all of the paints that I use for this paint job down in the description of the video. And should you have any questions, maybe a couple of suggestions, be my guest and share your thoughts in the comment section. It feels really good to be able to truly come back to more painting content. This miniature is the final piece of a huge commission that I've been working on almost an entire year now. Combined with regular and academic work that I had to do, this was the reason why I wasn't able to upload as much. But guess what? With this miniature now finally completed, I have paid my due diligence and I am truly free for the first time in forever. With perfect timing for the new releases and a boatload of cool projects that I can't wait to finally get to tackle. And if you'd like to accompany me on this ride through a truly, let's say, interesting year of 2023, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As I am really looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care.